Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. This whole beef between Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion has gotten crazy. There's a lot that has happened and Nicki roasted Megan in her new song, Bigfoot. Apparently that's Nicki's new nickname for Megan. She's called her Bigfoot, Lion Lipo, Lion Serpent, Big Bertha. I mean, the list goes on and there's so many crazy things that happen. But before I get into it, I first wanna thank Paired for sponsoring this video. Do you want to level up your current relationship? Well, look no further than Paired. The Paired app is the ultimate relationship companion offering an array of interactive games, challenges, and tools designed to foster communication, trust, and intimacy between you and your partner. The app empowers couples to unlock their relationship potential, strengthen their bond, and create lasting memories together. The various quizzes, question prompts, and interactive challenges in the Paired app are created by relationship therapists and experts, and you and your partner can complete them from wherever you are and whenever you you choose one of my favorite features about the paired app is the relationship timeline feature which allows you to create a timeline of important moments in your relationship we all know that communication understanding and trust are keys to a healthy relationship let paired help you develop these in your relationship click the link in the description box to get a seven day free trial and 25 percent off paired premium so you can unlock your relationship potential and strengthen your bond with your partner so last week, Megan Thee Stallion dropped her song, Hiss. And I did do a whole breakdown on Megan's diss song. And you know, Megan, she had some heat. She definitely had some heat and she did trigger Nicki Minaj. She definitely got under her skin. Now, what was said that made Nicki triggered? So this is what Megan said in her song, Hiss. These O's don't be mad at Megan. These O's be mad at Megan's law. Now, if you don't know, Megan's law was put in place to alert the public of any ex-offenders living in their community. So Nikki's husband, Kenneth Petty, is actually on the offenders list. So this line was not only a shot at Nikki, but also Nikki's husband. And this is why Nikki was very triggered. So Nikki unleashed her Roman persona and she started going off on Megan on social media for three days straight. <laughs> and I have to be honest with you, I was concerned. I was concerned at the amount of energy she was directing towards Megan because it just seemed a little bit excessive. I would have much rather her drop a diss song only instead of giving her this much attention because I really believe that Nicki made Megan's song hiss trend at number one. Nicki gave Megan free promo and Megan is gonna take this and run with it. She's now starting her rollout and also she's been ignoring a lot of Nikki's tweets. So she appears to be unbothered in the situation and optically it looks better for her than it does for Nikki. I think the optics don't look too good for Nikki because it just seems like she's coming at Megan unprovoked. But it did kind of dawn on me that her energy is not really just for Megan, but it's also for Rock Nation. If you don't know, Rock Nation is Megan's management company and Desiree Perez and Jay-Z are the heads of Rock Nation. And they've been really investing a lot into Megan's career. They've been very strategic in how they pushed her. They made sure before anything that she got that Nicki co-sign first. Once Megan did that Hot Girl Summer song with Nicki, her career got catapulted completely. I mean, she reached new heights and she went on to collaborate with Beyonce and Nicki's nemesis, Cardi B. And it just opened up the door for her to win three Grammys. Now, I think Nicki felt a way about this because she felt used. And also there were some conversations that were had behind the scenes that really turned Nicki off. Nicki claimed that Megan was trying to get her to drink knowing that Nicki was trying to have a baby. And Nicki alluded to Megan trying to get her to, you know, delete her child if she were to get pregnant, allegedly. Also, Nicki felt used in a sense because she did the Hot Girl Summer song for free. She admitted in a tweet, didn't charge her for the hot girl summer verse that I recorded the night she begged and begged to go on my live, but it's okay. So Nikki did that song for free and she didn't get much in return. You know, Megan didn't even go on her queen radio show to promote the song. So she kind of used her. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if rock nation got in Megan's ear and said, Hey, distance yourself from Nikki. 
You got what you wanted from her, but you don't need her. We can give you something bigger. We can give you a collaboration with Beyonce. And I'm not saying this is what happened, but this is what I'm thinking, okay? This is just a theory. I think Rock Nation wanted Megan to be Nicki's competition, which is why they invested so much into her. And once Jay-Z was able to secure Megan's collaboration with Beyonce, he then helped her to win three Grammys. If you don't know, Jay-Z is on the voting committee at the Grammys. He has a lot of influence there. So I believe that he helped her secure those three Grammys. And this was also another way to kind of propel Megan above Nicki because Nicki doesn't have a Grammy. She's been blackballed from the Grammys. So the fact that Megan being a new artist was able to come in and win three was very telling, but Megan has a lot of powerful people backing her, including Rock Nation. And Nikki is not gonna outright and say it, but I do think she has an issue with some of the people behind Megan, and that is Jay-Z, Desiree, Rock Nation. She has an issue with that whole machine because I think she believes that they're using Megan as a pawn to replace her. So I noticed that Nikki name dropped Rock Nation a few times. If that Rock Nation brunch got you feeling like you could talk about my family, and I have a three-year-old innocent child, have had my home swatted twice with with guns drawn, they magically no one no one seemed to find the the person. Nikki also came at Desiree, the head of Rock Nation, and she said, on the next song, I delve into all the people Desiree allegedly fired for unknown reasons, other things as well. So many people were blindsided and hurt by her, allegedly. She's willing to go broke and try to replace me. Fix it, Jesus, hashtag Goodfoot. So Nikki is alluding to the head of Rock Nation, Desiree Perez, trying to use Megan to replace her. And I think Nikki feels like Jay-Z is in on this too. And he has certain affiliates that attack her. And this is a little off topic, but I do remember when Nikki called out the reporter, Elliot Wilson, because Elliot threw shade at her for doing a live stream with Kai Sinet. And when Nikki clapped back at Elliot, she brought up Jay-Z and I thought that was very interesting. You know how many tweets I've seen you post disrespecting me, Elliot Wilson? All of y'all, for some reason, when y'all are around certain people, y'all feel that y'all have this power. Why, when y'all have an affiliation to Jay-Z in some sort of way, y'all be thinking that y'all can disrespect and violate? Hmm? So considering all of this, I don't think Nikki's issue is just with Megan. I think she doesn't like that whole Rock Nation entity and she has certain feelings about Desiree Perez and Jay-Z. That's what I think. Now, I wanna talk about what Nikki said about Megan because she said a lot. I can't even get into all the tweets because she tweeted so much that I was just like, you know what, forget it. I can't even cover all of this, but I do wanna get into what she said on her IG Live and on Station Head. Nikki implied that Megan allegedly dissed Cardi B and called her a dirty Mexican. And I believe this was before Megan collaborated with Cardi, but apparently Megan and Nikki had some conversations and Megan was talking smack. The nickname, the nickname that you got for your friend, your, your homegirl that rap. Tell everybody the nickname you got for her, yeah. Tell them what you call her. Don't you call her that dirty Mexican? Let me guess, Nikki's lying, right? Nikki also called out Megan for snaking her ex-best friend, Kelsey. Now it has been put out there that Megan slept with Tori Lanes behind Kelsey's back, knowing that Kelsey was talking to Tori. And Tori wasn't the only man that she took from her friend Kelsey, allegedly. So Nikki called Megan out for betraying her friend. I just got off the phone with Kelsey. Lion Lipo had to prove, you know, she could get the short boy too. So even if it meant hurting someone that is her friend, her best friend was put through humiliation while she sat back, knowing what she was doing to this girl. 
What you did to Kelsey was disgusting. What you put that woman to, through. You put your black friend, a young black woman, let her be bullied nonstop. Went on Gail King. Uh, you was lying to the queen and you went lying to the king. Nikki also went on a rant against Megan for shading her husband, Kenneth Petty. You wicked woman lying on your dead mom. I told y'all since my son has come into this world, don't play with me about no family, nothing. Ashley, I should have been bumping partisan um, diss track because partisan is the one that said you lie on your dead mother when you lie, bitch. Why the f you not mad at partisan? He spilled all your tea, lying lipo. Listen, um, baby, you can make as many motherfucking fake pages as you want to. You the one that lied on your dead mama, on your dead mama, lied on your dead mama. I dare you. I fucking dare you to say one more thing about my fucking family, ho. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I was turned off by Nikki bringing up Megan's deceased mother. Megan has definitely been caught in some lies. So I get it. You think she's a liar? That's cool. Call her lying lipo. Okay, that's a funny line, whatever. But to bring up her deceased mother is just in poor taste, in my opinion. And it doesn't translate well to the public at all. So I think a lot of people were turned off by it, not just me. Now, I do wish Nikki did one thing. I wish she just dropped her song Bigfoot, the diss song, and left it at that. I could have went without the rants and the different tweets. But if she just dropped that song Bigfoot and just disappeared for a moment that would have been enough because i thought the song bigfoot was hilarious i don't care what anybody else says i think the lyrics went over a lot of people's heads because nikki's delivery was so unserious and so silly but in the lyrics she was reading megan for filth and she referenced several rappers that megan was linked to in the industry now get into this verse this little begging or talking about megan's law for a free beat, you could hit Megan Raw. If you a ghostwriter, party in Megan Jaw. Ooh. So she was referencing Megan's ex-boyfriend, Party. Party is known for being a ghostwriter. He writes for artists like Cardi B. And he also has writing credits on Megan's song, Savage. So Nikki is alleging that Megan is out here giving oral to Party for him to write songs for her. And she's also sleeping around with producers to get free beats, allegedly. She also said shots thrown, but I still ain't let Megan score. Bad B, she likes six foot, I call her Bigfoot. So she's making fun of Megan's height and comparing her to the beast Bigfoot. And also she's making fun of the fact that Megan has significantly bigger feet than she does. So she said Megan fell off because her last few singles underperformed and she also referenced her getting shot in one of her feet and she said, get up on your good foot. So that was very savage. I'm not going to lie. That was savage. She also said, uh, still ain't top red Ruby trying to steal the sauce. I say, get up out my cookbook. Mm. So she feels like Megan is out here trying to steal the sauce. She's trying to copy her moves. She also said, um, why did you lie about your lipo? F and your best friend, man is crazy. You the type though. You was lying to the queen. Then you went lying to the king. Gail, the 30 year old T so stale. Kylie kicked you out and made you stumble to the car. Barb's, I need a good alcohol bar. So she was referencing the night when Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez got into it. It was said that Megan got so drunk off of alcohol and she allegedly was escorted out of Kylie's house because she allegedly was upset that Tory was in there canoodling with Kylie. So she said Kylie kicked her out and she was stumbling out because she was drunk. Nikki also said, I'm about to get up in your A, B, clinch. Woo. Mm, sort of like French. So <laughs> it was alleged that Megan was messing around with French Montana, allegedly. Also, Nikki said, they got you all them Grammys, but your flow is still a no. What a fiasco, Lupe. Future made you pay. So she referenced the rapper Lupe Fiasco. Shout out to Lupe. And then she said, Future made her pay. So Future charged her a quarter of a million dollars for his verse on her song Pressure Licious, which flopped. 
And I don't think Megan liked the fact that she had to fork out that much money. It wasn't a good investment at all. Also, Nikki said she want to party with the baby while rubbing on Tori to pay. I guess she needed the money bags for them Trey songs. Woo. <sighs> okay, back up, back up. Now, <laughs> the rapper, the baby did allude to Megan messing around with him and Tori around the same time because he said in his song, Boogeyman, that Megan linked up with him two days before she linked up with Tori. And Nikki is implying that Megan is spreading herself around to get money from these guys to pay for certain songs. And she referenced two of the guys that Megan was linked to, Moneybag Yo and Trey Songs, and said, I guess she needed those money bags to pay for them Trey Songs. That was kind of a crazy bar. And she also said she G easy. Carl made her crawl for it. So once again, she's referencing another rapper that Megan was linked to named G Easy, and she called her Easy and said that her old label owner Carl Crawford made her crawl for it. Maybe that was the underlining reason why she was beefing with Carl. They probably had something going on. Who knows? I don't know. Now this part is even messier because at the beginning of the song, Nikki said, how you F your mother man when she die? How you gonna go on Gail King and can't cry? Child, bye. Bigfoot, you're still a small fry. So Nikki alleged that Megan slept with her mother's man after she passed away? That's a wild, wild, salacious statement. I, I don't know what to say about that, honestly. I mean, like I said, I'm not really a fan of her speaking on Megan's deceased mother, but this was just wild. I mean, I wonder where Nikki got this information from. Did she get it from Kelsey? Child, Nikki is a menace. She is a menace. Like, this song was very disrespectful, but at the same time, I can't help but respect the pen game. Like, she kind of ate Megan up. Megan's diss song, Hiss, was good, but Nikki came a little harder in my opinion. And I don't really think that Megan is going to respond with her own diss track. I think what Megan is gonna do is she's gonna continue to kind of poke Nikki a little bit and sub her to get a reaction out of her, but she's not gonna get into a full on rap war with her. Nikki has a lot of energy for her and she seems to have a lot of receipts as well. So I don't think Megan wants to tussle too much with Nikki, but she does want to poke at her to get some publicity. And she wants that reaction out of her because she wants her to look crazy. And this is why I think Nikki should not have given her so much energy because she honestly does look crazy in the situation, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, her tweeting nonstop was a little concerning. But at the same time, I think the Bigfoot record <laughs> was funny enough to me. Was it mean? Yes, but I'm not gonna act like I didn't bust out laughing while listening to it because there were some funny lines in there. And I think Megan has the same type of clever, funny energy as well. I think if she were to come back at Nikki, she would be just as slick with her words. So I could definitely see them going toe to toe. But I do think both of them have to be very careful of their wordplay because they could receive some backlash from it. I am hearing that Megan might be facing some legal issues with the family of Megan Kanka because she used that Megan's Law line. Megan's Law was actually a law put in place because the seven-year-old girl Megan was taken off this earth by this wicked predator who the community didn't know about. So. Megan's law was put into place to alert the community of any predators that were roaming around. Even though Megan Thee Stallion brought awareness to the law, Megan Conka's father, Richard, had a problem with it and he found it highly offensive and very, very painful. The subject is still very touchy, so I think both Megan and Nikki have to be mindful of some of the things they say in the music because they're not only going to hurt each other, but they're going to hurt people who have nothing to do with their rap beef. So they have to keep that in mind. But anyway, tell me what y'all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.